In today's video, we will be taking a look at the 9751 LEGO DAX Serial Interface, or Control Lab Interface B as it was commonly known. It was released in 1993 through LEGO DACTA for use in educational environments with sets 9701 Control Lab and 9702 Control System. It is the second computer interface LEGO release for use in schools. The Interface A used 4.5 volt motors and sensors, while this version uses the 9 volt system. Inside the box, we find a short user guide, the interface, and a 12 volt AC transformer. The interface has eight inputs and eight outputs, as well as an always on port for testing. Now let's get into the software. There are a few third party software options that can be used with modern operating systems, but I will cover those in a future video. In this video, I'm going to show you the official Control Lab software running on Windows 98. We'll start by opening the Control Lab software. First and foremost, we are greeted with the setup page. Here we will assign our inputs and outputs to their respective ports. In my test build, I have lamps on output ports A, F, G, and H. Motors on B and E, not to be confused with breaking and entering, and micro motor on port C, and finally, a sound element on port D. We can control each output using the small circles above each port. We can also double click the icon and get a few more options such as experiment. Here we can test an output compared to a stopwatch or a sensor reading. Very useful for testing models such as a robotic arm. Now let's assign our sensors. Temperature sensors on ports 1 and 2, touch sensors on ports 3 and 4, rotation sensors on ports 5 and 6, and light sensors on ports 7 and 8. If we double click the icons, we have a few more options. For temperature sensors, we can measure in Fahrenheit or Celsius and make adjustments if a sensor is off of calibration. For touch sensors, we can choose between a Boolean reading, which is just on and off, or we can use a counter option to count how many times it has been pressed. For rotation sensors, we can measure using the rotation option, which counts 16 ticks per rotation, or the angle option to measure in degrees. For light sensors, we can read as a percentage or as a raw reading from 0 to 1023. Now let's look at the command center page. This is a text box allowing us to run logo commands directly. To run the motor on port E, I would type talk to motor E on and press enter. Talk to can be shortened to TTO. So I can stop the motor by typing TTO motor E off. You can also start and stop procedures here. Let's look at the procedures page. I'll make a simple procedure to control the red light. We'll call it red light dot test. We'll turn the red light on for two seconds, yellow for one, and then green for two seconds. Again, we can start the procedure from the control center page. Now for the real star of the show, our control pages. This is what's known as a WYSIWYG editor, which stands for what you see is what you get. We can add graphs and monitors, which can show functions and sensor data. We can also add text, pictures, buttons, and sliders. Let's look at some simple pages I've made to illustrate how they can be used. On page one, I've added pictures of each input and output, as well as monitors for each sensor and switches for each output. On each page, I've added buttons to move between the pages. They use the get page command, which can also be used in procedures. On page two, I have both temperature sensors being read by a monitor, as well as a graph. One sensor is reading in Fahrenheit, and the other Celsius. If I hold my fingers on the sensor, you can see the monitor and graph slowly react to the temperature change. On page three, I have both touch sensors and monitors for each. One is reading a Boolean true or false, and the other is counting presses.
turning on the micro motor on port C, we'll press the touch sensor once per revolution. The page can be slow to show the changes, but a procedure can read the sensor much faster. On page 4, I have both rotation sensors and monitors for each. In this case, they are both measuring rotations and not angles. The sensor on the left is reading rotation increments from the control lever I've built. As I move the lever up, the sensor reads from 0 to 8 and vice versa. The sensor on the right reads rotation increments from motor E after a gear reduction. If we turn on motor E, the monitor will start counting up. I've also written a simple procedure to use the lever to control the speed of motor E. The procedure is controlled by the motor control switch. On page 5, I have both light sensors and monitors for each. The sensor on the left has either a white or black brick in front of it. You can see the light percentage reading change accordingly. The sensor on the right is being used to count how many times the ball passes the sensor. This could be used to count throughput on a great ball contraption. I'm using a lamp to help get a more accurate reading. A switch starts a simple procedure that counts the passes. I hope you've enjoyed this brief retrospective of the LEGO DAC to Control app. We've only scratched the surface of what is possible with this software. Thank you for watching, and remember to play well.